Hello, welcome to my channel, and thank you for watching this video. If you enjoy the content, please like and subscribe. If you are into PC gaming, chances are you've heard about AMD's new line of Raven Ridge APUs. They are fantastic little chips that gave gamers a way of getting into the PC gaming space without having to fork out a zillion dollars for an overpriced graphics card. When it comes to gaming performance, there are dozens of videos out there benchmarking these chips with the latest and greatest games. Here's the thing though. If you're only spending $99 on your CPU-GPU combo, how many $60 games will you actually be buying? In my mind, at least, that defeats the purpose of building a budget system. So what I decided to do is test the Ryzen 3 2200G in a number of older and cheaper games to see how it performs. Today, we will be using 16GB of RAM running in dual channel at 2667 megahertz. The frame buffer size, or amount of system memory that's dedicated to the built-in Vega graphics, is set at two gigabytes. For recording in-game footage, I used an Elgato Game Capture HD and used MSI Afterburner for the overlay as well as the benchmark data. Starting us off is Titanfall 2, running at 1080p at mostly low settings. This game has an amazing adaptive resolution system which allows you to set an FPS target and the game will dynamically adjust the in-game resolution to hit your target. This made Titanfall 2 a joy to play and I ended up playing for several hours this way because it was such a good experience. We saw an average of 61.1 frames per second, 1% low of 49.9 and a 0.1% low of 41.9. So very smooth and very pleasant experience. In Prey, we have the resolution set at 900p with medium settings. I feel that in this game, it runs and looks better this way than at 1080p low. The average frames per second was 37.3, with a 1% low of 28.4, and the 0.1% low was 17.5. Definitely playable and a decent experience overall. 24, 20, 25, 1980, 1960, 1963. In Borderlands 2, we are at 1080p with mostly medium settings. This provided a smooth, fun, and good looking experience with the average frames per second at 51.3, 35.1 for the 1% low, and 16.6 frames per second for the 0.1% low. This means that there was a bit of stutter, but nothing very distracting or detrimental to the experience. Up next, we have Dirt Rally at 1080p using the medium preset. This game ran great with an average of 56.6 frames per second, with a 1% low of 47, 
and a 0.1% low of 38.7 meters per second. Here we have the Vanishing of Ethan Carter Redux running at 1080p medium with the resolution scale set to 85%, effectively rendering the game at 900p. Even at these settings, this is an amazing looking game, and the 2200G was able to run the opening scene at an average of 36.5 FPS, with a 1% low at 19.6 and the 0.1% low of 16.4. This is quite playable with only the occasional minor stutter. Star Wars Battlefront was set to 1080p low, save for the mesh quality setting which was set to high, and with the resolution scaler set to 83%, causing the game to be rendered almost exactly at 900p. It still looked quite good and ran well with an average of 50.6 frames per second, a 1% low of 31.9, and a 0.1% low of 24.9. Here we have Insurgency, running at 1080p medium, and ran great with an average of 86.6 frames per second, a 1% low of 49.2, and a 0.1% low of 28.1. Up next is Assetto Corsa running at 1080p with mostly medium settings, but with memory bandwidth heavy effects reduced fairly drastically, because memory bandwidth heavy effects tend to really kill performance on these APUs. Sliding around by myself on the drift track, we saw an average of 91.4 FPS, a 1% low of 69.5, and a 0.1% low of 48.5 frames per second. This was a flawless experience, but keep in mind that on a larger track with other drivers, you'll see an expected performance hit.
In Castle Crashers, running at 1080p Ultra, we saw an average of 59.8 FPS, a 0.1% low of 40.3, and a 0.1% low of 7.5. The poor 0.1% performance is only seen during scene transitions, and during normal gameplay, it runs very well. Portal 2 was set to 1080p with the highest settings, save MSAA, which was turned down to 2x. It mostly ran very well with an average of 94.4 frames per second, 1% low at 47, and a 0.1% low of 7 frames per second. The 0.1% lows are from the occasional stutter which can be seen in the frame time graph up on the top left of the screen. assumption that you're still alive and I'm just gonna wait for you up ahead I'll wait I'll wait one hour then I'll come back and assuming I can locate your dead body some emergency testing may require prolonged interaction with lethal military androids next is Dave infamy running at 1080p medium again with memory bandwidth heavy effects turned down In Call of Juarez Gunslinger, we are at 1080p with the highest settings, and here we see an excellent result with an average of 71.4 frames per second, a 1% low of 48.3, and a 0.1% low of 35.3 FPS. In Fallout New Vegas, the game is set to 1080p high, and in the opening scene, we see an average of 60.2 FPS, 1% low of 19.2, and a 0.1% low of just 4.8 FPS. From what I can tell, the vast majority of the stutter occurs while in the Pip-Boy interface.
Next we have Counter-Strike Global Offensive running at 1080p medium. And here we see an average of 114.4 FPS, 1% low of 63.8, and a 0.1% low of 41.6. This was a great experience, and I'd be more than happy to play CSGO anytime on this APU. Finally, we have Brothers, A Tale of Two Sons. This game is a little strange in that there doesn't seem to be any video settings. Like, it's running at 1080p, but in video settings, all we get is a gamma slider. For real. At any rate, for frames per second, we see an average of 56.6, 1% low of 42, and a 0.1% low of 0.4. These horrible 0.1% figures, as far as I can tell, only happen in scene transitions, and rarely affect gameplay. So, verdict time. Would I recommend the Ryzen 3 2200G for gamers who are on a budget? Absolutely. This little chip is amazing, and I have no idea how AMD is able to sell them for so little. Honestly, I think it's the best value in PC gaming right now. Anyways, if you enjoyed the video and appreciate the time that went into making this, I would love it if you could give me a like, and maybe a subscription if you want to see more videos like this in the future. And as a teaser, I'll tell you that I'm working on an ultra-small form factor gaming PC that uses this APU, and it should be a pretty fun video, so stay tuned for that. Thanks, and I'll see you in the next video.